pop-up headlights were most commonly found on sports cars, but Honda also liked to add them to their models. These headlights could flip up and down and were concealed when they were turned off. These type of lights date back to the 1930s, but vehicle light regulations changed over time. And by the 1990s, the pop-up headlight was facing extinction due to safety issues. Because of this, manufacturers phased out this light configuration, which would disappear altogether in 2004. The appeal of automatic seatbelts is unknown, but a lot of compact cars made in the 1980s had this feature. If you remember getting into an older Honda Civic or Honda Accord, you probably remember the seatbelts sliding back across your shoulder. The concept was that the driver and passenger would not need to remember to put on their seatbelt because the car took care of that for you. Although intentions were good, these seatbelts required you to manually buckle the lap belt, which many people failed to do. The seatbelt motors would also often burn out or get stuck, making buckling up nearly impossible. So by the early 1990s, this feature had been abandoned completely. Car buyers used to complain about their antennas getting either stolen or damaged at the car wash, so automakers decided to solve this problem by introducing power antennas. These were used on cars well into the early 2000s, and there were a lot of benefits to a power antenna. But the drawback was that the antenna became more complicated to replace or repair, and could cost hundreds of dollars. Fortunately, over time, automakers figured out how to incorporate the antenna into the design of the car, and the power antenna became a thing of the past. Vent windows allowed passengers in a car to push out a little piece of triangular glass to let in some fresh air. This was an essential design feature considering most cars in the first half of the 20th century didn't have air conditioning. Even during the 1950s, air conditioning was reserved for the most luxurious cars. Vent windows showed up less and less as AC became cheaper and eventually standard in vehicles. Some of the very last vehicles to have this feature were the Ford F-150s and Dodge Rams from 1996. At the time, Landau roofs were considered the pinnacle of American luxury. These sometimes vinyl roofs were meant to look like a convertible, and they were named after a horse-drawn carriage that came from Landau, Germany. The only problem was that these roofs would deteriorate and eventually fall apart. Replacing the vinyl could be an expensive proposition and not something that many people wanted to deal with. This style of roof fell out of style by the 1990s, although occasionally you still might find a Landau roof on a new Cadillac. Heavily influenced by the movie Smokey and the Bandit and the fact that cell phones were non-existent, some cars in the 1980s had the option to come with a CB radio. The CB radio made two-way communication between cars really convenient, but the fad seemed to die off pretty quickly as cell phones became universally accepted. CBs are still around though, and many enthusiasts, truckers, and emergency responders continue to use the device, and it seems that some reliable technologies, like CB radios, never quite go out of style. While General Motors was responsible for creating the removable T-top roof design, many other automakers adopted it. T-tops were an iconic part of the 1970s and 1980s. The issue was that there were a lot of safety problems that T-tops had. The first and foremost was the structural safety of the car, which was compromised by T-tops. Then you had the leaking roofs, and even damage to the T-tops caused by improper storage of the glass panels. In the end, automakers dropped this concept altogether, although GM offered them as an option on some models up until 2002. Like most features of early American cars, Front bench seating was a holdover from the horse-drawn carriage. Allowing for extra passengers or just to give everybody a little more room, 
the bench seat was a popular feature of the big American sedan. Safety regulations in the 1970s led to the bench seat declining in popularity, but they remained in many trucks. The introduction of the center console meant that many new cars simply didn't have the space. But if you were a kid in the 1970s and 80s, there is no doubt you rode around on that front bench seat. The Crown Victoria was one of the last modern sedans to offer bench seating. Other than that, bench seats and sedans were abandoned altogether. As automakers worked to improve the interior quality of their vehicles, velour seats became very popular. These seating options were meant to be more comfortable and luxurious, and they could be found in all kinds of cars, from Hondas to Cadillacs. The only problem was that these seats would make you sweat. For long summer trips, velour seating wasn't ideal. In addition to that, they also didn't hold up very well, breaking down and becoming flat within a couple years. Chrysler ended up using velour seating up until the 1990s, but for most, it was a relic left in the 1980s. Remember car seats that had button tufting? These were ultra comfortable seats that made cars feel even more luxurious. This type of seating was often included on lower trim levels, which GM was notorious for doing. Chrysler was one of the last automakers to offer this in their K-Car interiors. Over the years, button tufting became just a fad that could often be found in the lowriders that were cruising the main streets of America. Nowadays, seating is more comfortable than ever, and leather is now the go-to upholstery for the car industry. The visual of a family going on vacation in a wood-paneled station wagon wasn't just in the movies. Many car models came with fake wood panels along the sides. While this wasn't bad looking at the time, it was cheaply made, causing the paneling to fall off or disintegrate. Many different cars used this wood paneling, with Chrysler being one of the last companies to offer it on the town and country minivan up until 1996. Today, wood paneling looks great on vintage vehicles and is a reminder of those family road trips in the family station wagon. If you enjoyed this video, click on this playlist to watch even more. And as always, thank you so much for watching.